is going on you guys? It's your girl Diana back at you with another YouTube video. Halloween is over so hopefully you guys enjoyed my like video vomit of Halloween uh, themed videos but I thought I would start off today November 1st with a fun and fresh fitness video for you. I don't know what that was, uh, but <laughs> I made one of these videos back in like, I want to say like 2015 or 2016, and it was horrendous. Like, I had literally been working out for like two weeks, thought I knew everything about fitness, so now that it's been like five years of trial and error, I thought I would give you guys some actual sustainable tips that I have used myself that are tried and true. What am I doing? that will actually help you on your fitness journey and will make it like not a roller coaster even though it's always going to kind of be a roller coaster but whatever so I just came up with my top 10 tips to help y'all actually have a sustainable fitness journey and not just you know just so if that made any sense to you then uh keep on watching okay so tip number one that I have for you guys is to pick goal and make sure that that goal is very like specific per se so that you have something to work for whether that is gaining muscle uh leaning out like losing fat wise or toning up or trying to i don't know train for a competition whatever your goal is just pick a specific goal so that you have something very broad to work towards just because like it's broad in the sense that that's like the end all be all and it's not like you don't have like the steps to get there yet just pick a goal and I would suggest not making it like a numbers goal because that's gonna we're gonna talk about that later on but pick a goal pick a specific goal so that you have something to work towards that's kind of like big picture thing that you want to achieve because that is going to basically help you put together everything else that leads up to that end goal. Tip number two is going to be to plan out your workouts. That it means literally get a notebook and write out your workouts, especially if you are new. Plan out your split, like your workout split. At this point, I kind of have mine memorized just because I've been doing it for so long. But if you are new, I definitely suggest like writing down your workouts for each day. Like for example, say on Monday, you're going to do uh, cardio and shoulders and triceps. And then you're gonna break down that like little like specific day into different like workouts that you can do and your sets slash reps next to it just so you know what to expect and what to focus on when you actually get into the gym you're not kind of just like running around trying to figure out <laughs> what to do because there's a million and three different uh, machines or weights that you can use so for example you could do like three sets of tricep dips and then three sets of like shoulder raises and stuff like that and then you're gonna write down how many uh, reps you're gonna put so I like for example for me I would put like three sets of 10 or four sets of 10 depending on what kind of exercise I'm doing. So if you just want to be specific and just pick out your exercises and also break down your different days of the week into what muscle groups you want to hit, it's just going to keep you very like on track and accountable and you're going to be able to give your muscles recovery time in between. So plan out your workouts, literally write them in a little planner, in your phone notes, my ratchet phone is broken. <laughs> whatever just plan them out write out how many sets of each exercise you want to do how many reps you want to do and what each exercise is for each day and also plan out your rest days because it kind of gives you something to look forward to when you see you got a rest day coming up <laughs> tip number three is if you are a newbie to the gym i highly suggest literally looking up different youtube videos on different exercises that you can do just so you can kind of get familiar with how to use each machine and how the form for each uh different exercise should look just so that you're getting the most out of your workouts obviously since you're new you're not going to be a pro with them but it does help to look up how to do everything before you go in just so you feel a little less lost and a little less intimidated when you literally walk up to a cable machine that has 5,000 different attachments and 5,000 different cables to it it's going to be a lot less intimidating if you look up a video of how to do whatever exercise you want to do beforehand so that you're not kind of just standing there like oh my jesus how does any of this work you can just go ahead and kill it once you're there tip number four what was that i was like 
<laughs> Ooh, <laughs> counting this arc. Tip number four is uh, start off light. If you are just getting back into the gym after you've taken a break or something, or you're brand new to the gym and you've never done like weightlifting before, I definitely suggest starting off light just because form is more important than trying to impress the person next to you that's probably been going to the gym for years and years and years. You feel like nobody's gonna judge you if you're picking up a 10 pound weight and doing the best you can. I promise you. I still pick up really light weights sometimes because I just don't have the strength anymore. Like because of like quarantine and stuff, gotta build that back up. So whether you have just gone back to the gym after they opened up or whether you are brand new to the gym, just start off light. That way you can get your form down and that way you don't get hurt either. And it also helps you get the most out of your workouts because if you're over here like trying to swing a 45 pound dumbbell across your body and you can't do that without swinging it's not going to work the muscle the same as if you had a 20 pound dumbbell and you were slow and controlled so put your ego aside start off light and then work your way from there tip number five is i highly suggest meal prepping just because if you are trying to achieve a goal such as leaning out or toning up or losing body fat, you're going to want to be in a calorie deficit. And I find that when I meal prep, I'm less likely to be like, well, there is X, Y, and Z restaurant right next to me. Let me just go get a salad there real quick, not knowing what's in the salad and then finding out later that the salad had like 2,000 calories. So meal prepping prevents you from having to deal with that whole debacle and also it kind of just like takes away from you like veering off of your like uh meal plan per se if you are following a meal plan it like makes like me specifically less likely to go find a snacky snack knowing that I already have a planned meal for breakfast lunch and dinner or some kind of like idea of that like you don't have to specifically meal prep for every single meal but if you have like certain meals meal prep for you it just kind of makes it easier for you to stay on track and you don't kind of like veer off your meal plan and it's honestly just really convenient and it saves you money so meal prep tip number six is make sure you take before and after pictures track your progress and i'm not talking about every day you don't have to take a picture every day but Make sure you take a picture at the beginning of your journey and then at least, I want to say like at least like once a month, take another picture. That way you can see how much of a difference you've actually made because a lot of times when you are starting off on like a fitness journey or getting back into a fitness journey, it makes it like discouraging if you're only going by like a number per se. Like I think pictures are a lot, show up progress a lot more just because your body really changes, especially in the beginning when you feel like you're not really changing. But if you like look back, like what, what, wow, of what you looked at like a month ago <laughs> and compare it to like your progress picture of like the next month, you're just like, huh, maybe I'm doing something right. And if you don't see a difference, you can kind of like backtrack and think, okay, well, did I follow my meal plan or did I skip some workouts? And then you can like track your progress that way. So I think taking progress pictures is super helpful because it kind of just shows how your body composition changes all together. And it's kind of like a more accurate representation of how you're doing on your journey than just say like looking at a number. You feel because numbers, they're liars. Tip number seven, if your workouts start to get too easy, like if you go to the gym and you do your normal workout and you feel like you did not think it was hard or you didn't break a sweat or you weren't like you don't feel like you did a good workout then up your weight so like I know I said to start off light but if you would do the same workout at the same weight every single time for weeks on end your body is going to get used to that and it's not going to have the same effect as anymore it's called uh like progressive overload it's kind of like the most basic form of like weight lifting which is where you kind of just like up the weight gradually to make sure that your body is always like trying to improve and try to work harder and therefore you're building more muscle which in general makes you lean out or if you're trying to bulk obviously it's going to add weight on you whatever definitely up your weight every so often just to keep your body challenged and make sure that you are still progressing towards your goal because your body can plateau and it will get used to workouts if you don't switch up the weight tip number eight i am a strong believer that having a workout buddy is fantastic. I personally don't have a workout buddy just because I'm a loser and I have no friends, but working out with someone is honestly like the best motivator because like you could push each other, you can cheer each other on, you can just like 
have your journey together and it just makes it like a nice feeling to know that you have like that support system if you're having like a bad workout or if you're having like an off week for your workouts or whatever it's just like a good motivator to have and someone to like support you and go through the journey with you and I honestly feel like me personally when I do work out with someone I get a little bit of an ego and I'm like okay, okay, I'm gonna go extra hard today because I gotta prove myself because I'm a competitive person you feel and it also makes it a lot less intimidating if you do end up going back to the gym or going to the gym for the first time with someone that you trust and it just kind of makes it more of like a fun hangout experience versus like a very intimidating scary I'm all alone and I don't know what to do or who to talk to kind of deal you feel so I definitely recommend getting a workout buddy it makes working out a lot more fun and a lot more sustainable in my opinion because it's like you got someone along for the ride with you <laughs> tip number nine wear something that makes you feel good make something that makes you that makes you feel confident because if you feel good about yourself when you walk in there whether that is wearing a cute new pair of Gymshark leggings or a cute little crop top or a sports bra or even if you want to walk up in there with a full-blown sweatsuit because you just want to get a good sweat in wear something that makes you feel good or makes you feel motivated because if you feel good about yourself your workout is going to be 10 million times better even if you want to toss on a little mascara Girl, no one is judging you. Go ahead, put on a full face of makeup if that's what makes you feel good. If you feel more confident in the gym wearing a full face of makeup and a cute little crop top and some little high-waisted leggings, congratulations, go ahead and do it. Whatever's gonna help you get a good workout in. Personally, I feel the best when I'm wearing a cute like workout set and I got a cute little ponytail going. Not really a fan of the makeup thing. I, I, I do it when I have to, but I'm, I'm a sweaty person. So it, but by the end of the workout, it's like, oh, you feel? But if that's what makes you confident, go ahead and do it. I 10, 10 do recommend full face of makeup, cute hair, cute workout outfit, whatever is going to help you get the best workout in and make you feel good about actually being there and make you want to keep going back to the gym, do it. Besides, look at all the cute workout clothes that are available now. Alphalete, Gymshark, Lululemon, Nike, Adidas, we love it all. Go do you. Be confident. Slay the gym. But also slay your workout because you feel good about being in the gym. You know what I'm saying? And lastly, tip number 10, the most important tip, and I feel like I've been alluding to it this entire video, is do not focus on the scale. Because I cannot even begin to tell you how much of a liar the scale is. Because you could be 115 pounds and be like 10% body fat and also be 110 pounds or 115 pounds and be, I don't know, 25% body fat. Same weight, but your body would look completely different just because of that whole like muscle weighs more than fat kind of deal. So like, do, like, that's why the progress pictures are so much of a more accurate way of tracking your progress than the scale. Because let me tell you. I hate the scale. <laughs> the scale is my worst enemy because I will have a day when I have been dieting hard, trying to be in a cut, trying to lean out, and I'm feeling good about myself, and I'll look at myself in the mirror and be like, look at these abs, look at that booty, and I'll step on the scale, and I'll be way more than when I started. And I'm like, what you mean? It makes no sense because the scale don't account for, mus for, for muscle weight. It just accounts for overall weight. So... Do not pay attention to the scale. Honestly, I rarely ever weigh myself, <laughs> to be completely honest. For me personally, as a girl, unless I specifically am like, okay, I am X weight and I want to get down to X weight, then I will occasionally weigh myself. But otherwise, if I'm just working to like tone up and like look cute, I'm gonna not weigh myself. I'm gonna look at my progress pictures instead because it's more accurate. If I can see my abs, it's fine. I don't care if I weigh more than I did when I started. Who cares? It just, I just feel like for your mental sanity, just forget about the scale. Like, it's just like a very, like, arbitrary way to track your progress. Don't recommend it. It's just going to make you feel bad about yourself if you don't see the number go down or even if you see the number go up. Just go based on the progress pictures or how your clothes are fitting, how you look in the mirror, how you feel about your energy levels, if your skin's looking clear. Those are the kind of markers you should be looking at. Honestly, <sighs> like the scale it does nothing for anyone's mental health like yes it's, it's a good it's a good tool to have but i would not base your overall 
progress on a number. All right, you guys, that is going to be my top 10 tips for starting or restarting your fitness journey and making it a sustainable thing that's not going to mess with your mental state. We, we want to make this a sustainable thing. We just want to be healthy. We want to look good for ourselves, not for anyone else, for yourself. And yeah, so hopefully these top 10 tips that I have come up with over the past few years are helpful. Let me know if you guys have your own tips of your own and give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more fitness videos in the future. But I will see you guys in next week's video. Love you.